Well, hello and welcome to your readings at the round table. I'm Jennifer. This is Jasmine, my licky friend back here. What can I say? It's time to groom herself as soon as I get on camera. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be a reading for June 1st through the 15th. Um, this is about the full moon in Sagittarius. This is amazing time, amazing time. Like, I'm not even kidding. You know, the full moon of Sagittarius comes when the sun is in Gemini. And this is so perfect because Geminis and Sagittarius people are the people that you want to have at your parties. I mean, Gemini and Sagittarius, those are the people that you want to get out there and, like, have some fun with. They are fun people. And this moon is also fun. It's a very energetic moon. This full moon in Sagittarius is happening, by the way, at 11.42 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I only do Eastern Standard Times because that's where I'm located. Sorry. Um, on June 3rd. On June 3rd. So full moons are typically about endings and letting go because we've been manifesting from the new moon to the full moon. So now it's like time to wrap it up. Now it's time to let go. It's time to release and it's time to wrap that stuff up. Now from the full moon to the new moon, we will like release. We'll constantly be letting go and like really have a, a, an ending to something. Um, this is a very energetic moon. Uh, this is entertaining, but not overly, like, emotionally dramatic, which is fantastic, which is super fantastic. Again, have you ever spent time with, like, a Sagittarius? So entertaining. I mean, really. And one of my sons has Sag rising, and I just have to laugh sometimes. I'm like, <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, so full moon in Sagittarius is also about long-term goals. Um, it helps us to focus our attention on looking far ahead instead of just like right now, which is what Gemini is about. Gemini has us focusing on the here and now, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's nice to have a balance between the immediate, the here and now, and the long-term, and that is... Full moon in, in Sagittarius with the sun in Gemini gives us that opportunity to do that. So this is wonderful. This is a mutable fire moon. So it can also make you feel really scattered. Like typically when the moon is in Sag, I do feel that. I feel a little scattered. That's just me. Um, and I, I mean, a lot of people feel that way. Um, during During most of the time, like... With the moon is in Sagittarius. However, this full moon, the moon is trying Mars. So this period, during this period of time, we should actually have some focus or some dedication to our plans or our goals. Because that trying with Mars is like settling it down just a little bit. Just a little. And it's enough that it we're still feeling the, I almost want to say the spontaneity of the Sagittarius, the like excitement of the Sagittarius without like feeling the burden of all that like Mars energy. Because Mars is in Leo right now. So or at least during, the, yeah, Mars is in Leo right now today. Yeah. Sorry, just double checking in my head. Um, so this is a, this is just a wonderful full moon. I'm so excited about it. I really am. And let me tell you, also while this full moon is happening, we have Mercury conjunct Uranus. So with Mercury conjunct Uranus, we can have some disruptive or maybe direct, sharply worded um, conversations or communications because, of course, Mercury is a sign of communication and Uranus is a little, a little disruptive. You know, he's just a little all over the place, a little disruptive. So this is a wonderful, this truly is a wonderful time for you to like 
uh, like celebrate and like start start your progression of letting go and releasing from this full moon until we reach the new moon in Gemini. Um, the other things that are going on during this couple of week period, um, on the 5th, <laughs> we have Venus moving into Leo, which is going to be like, it, it's going to be drama, but it's not like, it, it's not like weeping drama. It's, it, it's, it, and it's not subdued, but it's not necessarily like super emotional. It's more like the flare it's more like the expression so this is going to be a time uh that we'll see very stylish like um outfits we'll see like very stylish hair maybe makeup where we're getting a little more dramatic with our expression do you see what i'm saying um it's a time of attention to details and everyone is really focused on their appearance I mean, I like that. I'm not mad at that. I'm a Virgo. I love it. I love it. Are you kidding me? I'm like, oh, let's, let's do, let's focus on the pretty. Yeah. So, um, I think this is a wonderful, I think this is wonderful. This is not, this is not a wallflower kind of energy. This is a really like shine, shine, shine kind of energy. And if you have Venus in Leo, then you're already that person. You're already that person that is just like, hi, here I am. Look at the neat thing I've done with my hair. Look at the neat thing I've done with my makeup or my piercings or my tattoos or my outfit. That's who you are. And I love that. I love it. So awesome. Um, on the 11th, we have Pluto retrograding back into Capricorn. <sighs> Been there, done that, right? For the last, like... 15, 16 years, Pluto has been in Capricorn. He's only been in, um, in Aquarius since March, but that's okay. No worries because once January rolls around, Pluto will be moving into Aquarius and this time he will be there for 20 years. So this is just the last little energy shift of, uh, Pluto and Capricorn. And then he's going to go direct and he's going to go right back into Aquarius and he's going to camp out there for 20 years, starting in January of 2024. And you'll hear me say that a million more times. So I'm sorry now. Yeah. All right. Um, the other thing is, and I didn't write down the date, so I have to go back and look at it. Um, Mercury is moving into Gemini also on the 11th. That's why I didn't write down the date because it's the same day that Pluto returns into Capricorn. So Mercury goes into Gemini and this is a wonderful thing because Mercury rules Gemini. Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo. So this is a fantastic time for open communication. Here's the thing though. It can kind of be difficult to tell like the truth from exaggeration but it's really important to stay truthful during this time. It's really important to, like, when we're presenting something to be factual and just say, okay, here's the situation. But it's a great time for open communication. It really is. This is also a wonderful time for studying, like, philosophy or a subject on the kind of, what does it all mean? You know, because... That's what Gemini is. People that have a lot of placements in Gemini are usually really, really smart. They're extremely curious. They want to know. They want to know how things work. They want to know how it operates. They're like, how does, how does this happen? What do we do with this? How can we make this happen? It's fantastic. It truly is. I have a moon in Gemini. A little bit curious there. <laughs> um, but I think this is a great time for you to dip your toe into that. What is it? What does it all mean? Kind of thing. So on the 14th, we have flag day. I love that because I have several friends actually that their birthdays are on flag day. You know, I'm always just surprised at it, like, oh my gosh, look at all these Geminis that were born on flag day. I know it's just interesting. So we just like to bring that out. And then I'll get to the second half of the month, of course, in the second half of the month reading when I do the new moon in Gemini. 
Uh, also, I'll be covering the whole month in the monthly numerology if you can't wait for the middle of the month reading. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, stay tuned because your sign is up after this. Um, but I want to go ahead and say this because I think I've forgotten to say it on a few videos. This is a general reading for everyone. Um, so if it resonates with you, that's great. And if it doesn't, that's okay too. Make sure you check out your sun, moon, and rising sign because sometimes you will resonate more with your moon or your rising sign more than you do your sun sign. And when you're looking at your horoscopes, you should definitely be looking at your rising sign if you know it. Several astrologers online will tell you that. I do follow that now that I've learned. Um, but I love this astrologer, Marin Altman. She's on YouTube. She is fantastic. She's the cutest little thing. She's also a Virgo. Um, but she is just, she's fantastic. Um, she does tropical zodiac and Western astrology. But she also adheres to the traditional astrology and not the modern astrology. Which I have a video coming out shortly that will explain, explain the differences in those two. Yeah. So um, enjoy your reading that's coming up next. And I will see you guys really, really soon. All right, Gemini. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Oh, had lunch. I've had a nice little break. And now it's your turn. Okay. <clears throat> Since Sagittarius is your opposite sign in the zodiac wheel, let's see what we got here. Ah, oh, forgot to switch the cameras again, didn't I? No big deal. Okay, Gemini, looking pretty good, actually. <clears throat> Let me move these a little bit out of the way. You know how I am. I like things to be lined up. Okay, here we go. Seven of Acorns, Determination and Stamina. Moving to Love, or in the traditional tarot, the Lover's Card, which is Choice and Trust. The strength card, courage and endurance. And it also reminds me of my favorite chakra, which is the um, solar plexus chakra. Mm -hmm. um, the ace of feathers, mental clarity and foundation. And the eight of acorns, which is energy and results. So... This is, this is really interesting because we start and end with acorns. Um, and acorns is fire energy, which is what this full moon in Sagittarius is, obviously. Um, <clears throat> but the seven of acorns, determination and stamina, starts this off and it feels like it continues on. It feels like you are staying the course. It feels like that's what you've been doing. Now, I don't know what happened before this here, before this card, Gemini, before this started stepping in. But I feel like the the stamina that you've been putting in, that you've been saying, okay, this is this is how I'm I'm wanting to proceed. This is what, you know, I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this happen. Spirit sees that. And when spirit sees that you're ready to keep making things work and that you're following your passion, you're trusting in your guides, you're trusting in um, the flow and just saying, okay, this is definitely the way I want things to go. This is definitely the way I want things to move. How can I proceed? And again, courage and endurance. The strength card is not all just about courage and endurance, though. It is about courage. But it's also about the courage to shut down maybe that internal self-criticism. And Gemini, I know you have it because I do and I have a Gemini moon. And I will question myself to death. Mm. 
something about those Gemini twins in your head where they're just going back and forth going, let it go, shut it down. No, love, be, be of love. Let's, let's forgive. And let's, and then you're just like, no, shut it down. Be of love. Yeah. It's really, really hard. Uh, and you're just like, how am I going to get through this? Having that, that, courage to shut down the self-criticism and to just say, okay, I can get, I know I can get through this. I've done it before. I know I can get through this, moving through this with, again, endurance and knowing that you have the strength to go the distance. It's just like I said earlier with that, um, that I always associate my favorite chakra, the solar plexus chakra with the strength card. That's personal power. It's inner strength and it's your psychic abilities. It's your intuition. It's, it's right here for you. The ace of feathers, the mental clarity and foundation. This is a new, uh, this is a new thought process. This is bringing in like a new sense of uh, consciousness, a new sense of awareness. Yes, clarity is part of that. But the thing is, it brings in a certain amount of success. And because you're, you're stepping into this new consciousness or this new clarity, this new mental clarity, you're building a very strong foundation and you're starting with it here. And that is so, so important is just to know that because you have, um, uh, because you, you've had the determination, you have the endurance, you have the courage, you're, you're following your passion, you're trusting in the process, you're going in the right direction. And because you're putting in the right energy, you're seeing an amazing amount of results here. The eight of acorns is a fast moving energy. It's an eel for Christmas sake. And it's a fast moving energy. And because you're, you're getting that fast moving energy and you're seeing these like results, it's, it, it, I feel like it's feeding your confidence even more. I feel like it's, it's feeding your confidence and you're like, yeah, yeah, I can make this happen. I can absolutely make this happen. I love it. I especially love this for you because, you know, there is a new moon in Gemini coming up. That's the next reading that I'll be doing for this month. And um, I think this is just, God, I think this is really awesome, to be honest with you, because it's lining up. Oh, yeah, look at this. It's just lining up perfectly. Mm. More fast-moving energy uh, alignment. Holy crap. Okay. We got a lot of cup energy in this second reading. Um, it, well, in the second line. Um, so we start out here with the Ten of Cups. We move uh, to the Knight of Wands. To the Knight of Swords. The Page of Cups. And the King of Cups. So um, the Ten of Cups is so fantastic. Because you're getting everything you want with your home, with your family, with your connections, with all of those things. But it takes some twists and turns. It takes some dips. <clears throat> Look, it's, it moves up and down. It takes some twists and turns. It doesn't mean that you're not going to get what you want. It just means that everyone, you know, everyone has lessons they need to learn, right? So you're getting what you want, but, you know, it does take some turns. It does move through some different things. We also don't live in a vacuum here. We do live on this planet with other people. So other people's decisions do have an effect on what we do, 
or what happens to us. Yes, it does. I mean, as much as we would like to just be like, you know, that's not going to affect me. It does affect us. It does. It doesn't have to pull us down. It doesn't have to make us like, you know, go crazy or just like lose it. But the thing is, it will affect us on some level, but it feels like you're rolling with the punches. It feels like you're rolling with it and going, okay, I can, I can handle this. I can make this happen. I can, you know, I can do this, which is really awesome. Um, the Knight of Wands, um, <clears throat> the Knight of Wands is just, again, it's a really amazing card because this is manifesting at its best. This is like, crazy charged manifesting energy where you're just like getting in there and you're like yep 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 I mean this is what aboriginal and native tribes have always done is that they they drum they chant they dance they you know whatever they have to do to manifest in what they need for the tribe or themselves or a group of people or a specific person if a specific person was sick or needed more this is what they would do they would do all of those like chants and manifesting. That's what they did. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're putting in the energy in such a, mono a, a phenomenal, phenomenal way. And it's moving fast. The Knight of Swords is the fastest moving card in the tarot. That's just one woman's opinion, by the way. It's just Jennifer's rule, not law or anything. But this is a very, very fast moving card. He is moving. He's following his guidance. He's following his guidance. He's not on the hunt yet, but he's going hunting, but he's following his guidance to where he needs to go. He's about to hop on a motorcycle and go even faster and speed off. So this is an important thing. Things are speeding up for you, Gemini. Things are definitely speeding up for you. Here's the kicker. You need to align yourself you need to align yourself with the vibration of what you want. Because the Page of Cups is an attracting energy. It's not as strong as of an attracting energy as the Knight of Cups. Because that's a strong attracting energy. It's, a, it, it's different than manifesting. It's the same but different. It's different than manifesting because this is, the, this is part of the law of attraction. You have to align yourself with what it is that you want align yourself with that vibration align yourself with that spiritual connection and it'll come into you it will come into you as soon as you align yourself with that it's like the sky's the limit because then you move into that full-on attracting energy and you start pulling in everything that you've been wanting everything that you've been dreaming for all the stuff that's on this it's just really wonderful the king of cups is just an incredible card for you because this is someone who is connected with their emotions they're connected to their emotions they're not ruled by it they're connected with their emotions because they're sensitive they're sensitive they're a sensitive person who understands that their emotional guidance system is telling them like what's really going on this is sensitive, but this, the King of Cups is also a good listener. He's, he, he's good at studying. He likes to study people. He likes to study reactions. He likes to study because the emotional guidance system is truly what gets him to where he needs to go. He's connected and he tries to stay grounded with it. He wants to stay connected to um, his emotions, but he also wants to stay connected to spirit and he wants to stay connected to animals and <clears throat> and he wants to stay grounded at the same time so challenging as that is i think you can do it gemini i really do because this is a wonderful time of you sitting back and listening and trying to understand what it is that spirit is bringing to you if you're manifesting something and you're trying to align yourself with that thing so that you can move faster towards it Understand that just because this is this is what you want up here doesn't mean that you're not going to take some twists and turns along the way to get there. It's not bad and it's not wrong. 
It's just the way it is. Maybe you're meant to help somebody else out along the way. Or maybe you're meant to, you know, learn a lesson along the way. Who knows? You know, maybe along the way you're meant to meet the love of your life. <gasps> Wouldn't that be great? Oh, yeah. Heard of mom. Do you know my son put the song in my head? He goes, Have you ever heard the song? It was a um, Nestle's Crunch Bar commercial from the 80s and I was like yes I have heard that and now it is stuck in my head and it has been for two days really it's just crazy gotta work that out you know <clears throat> Oops, I've got a card. Well, I'll just take that card because it's um, kept flipping over. <clears throat> All right, Gemini. All these cards kind of match. Look at that. I love that. I love that. Okay, first advice card from the animal deck is Otter. Woman, medicine, and playfulness. I love this. Otter awakens curiosity, the wonder of life, and playfulness. It is comfortable on land and in water, which makes it grounded in its intuition and caring spirit. It has a strong love of the young. Mm. Water links to feminine energy and the heart, intuition, and a strong love of creativity. That's very interesting. It reminds me, even though the King of Cups is not the female um it is very feminine it is i mean the king of cups is still a very feminine energy all right second advice card is isis this is from spirit and it is magic manifesting your dreams visions and goals are becoming reality stay focused <sighs> manifesting aligning with those moving faster moving faster clarity i love this i love this this is so great and the last advice card from the essential oil deck is cardamom the emotional aspects of cardamom it releases blaming lack of control and deep frustration it instills patience self-control and acceptance of what is it creates a sense of acceptance and accountability, creates a calming effect and the ability to bring balance to body and mind. Mental clarity. The centering thought. I take my own accountability. I know who I am. I accept the challenges life brings me as lessons for growth and learning. The affirmation. Why is it so easy for me to take my own accountability? The chakras are the root, the solar plexus, 
cat and the sacral. So it's, it's all three of the lower chakras. Wow. This is so exciting, Gemini. I really love this. You are manifesting. You're manifesting a lot right now. And I think this is so incredible. And I think it's just really, really important to keep focused. Keep focused on what it is that you want to bring into your life and align yourself with that vibration. But keep your focus and manifest. This is a wonderful time for you to do that very thing. Thank you so much for joining me today, Gemini. I so, so appreciate your support on my channel. Don't forget to watch your monthly numerology for June that is coming out. Yeah, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful full moon in Sagittarius. And until we see each other again, Gemini, get out there and make your magic. Bye.